This episode is brought to you by Shapeshift.io, the easiest, fastest, and most secure way to swap your digital assets. Don't run the risk of leaving your funds on centralized exchange. Visit Shapeshift.io to get started today. Hello, everybody. Today we chat with Mike Golden from AdChain about token curated registries, which is part of a series that I'm concentrating on on crypto economic primitives. And what I mean by that is essentially any kind of incentive structure that, where you can use kind of monetary signaling to affect information signaling. So these are things kind of at the, at the application layer, like curation markets or token curated registries. Um, but there are also tons of these at the protocol layer. And so, you know, using that frame above, you can imagine something like proof of work as essentially a financial incentive, uh, aka monetary signaling, to determine the order of transactions and blocks, um, aka information and, and, and the information layer. Uh, and things like proof of stake do a very similar thing where you kind of use financial incentives in order to determine the data and the kind of the information layer. Um, so that's what crypto economic primitives are. And i uh, excited to chat about application layer today and chatting more with various people around the protocol layer soon. Uh, and one final note here is that uh, these TCRs are powerful, um, and there was this curation market TCR meetup at DevCon, and you know almost 20 people showed up. People are really excited by the stuff. You can use these primitives in really interesting ways, and I was just impressed by the people there and how they're using them as building blocks um, at the protocol layer, at the application layer, um, and, and hopefully interviews coming out with those people soon around these great new ways that TCRs are being used to kind of, in a decentralized way, make lists. So with that, I hope you enjoy the show. Bye. Hello, fabulous listener. My name is Reese Lindmark, and you're listening to another episode of Creating a Humanist Blockchain Future. And in this podcast, we take a systems thinking approach to creating a better future. And so we, we look at a couple different series in this vein. Some of them are these humanity level systems like, you know, venture capital and philosophical macro trends. Some of them are kind of company level systems like lean and agile and teal. Some of them are technological systems like crypto economics and machine learning. And we're actually going to be talking about that today, uh, specifically around crypto economics and mechanism design. And happy to have Mike Golden on the show, the lead engineer for Consensus Ad Tech, who works on AdChain, a Consensus and MetaX joint venture. And he's also the co-inventor of an emerging crypto economic primitive, a token curated registry uh, that we actually discussed recently with Joe Ergo from District OX, uh, District OX. So Mike, thanks for being on the show and welcome. Thank you for having me. Excited to chat. Um, and to give listeners and kind of pull them in and give them a little bit of context before we dive into the work you've been doing, um, I like to think about this from kind of a... Uh, people are doing a lot of mapping within the space, and uh, one of the mappings are like these different kinds of developer stacks. Like, okay, this, you know, there's Filecoin, there's Truebin, there's whatever. Fred Esrom has a great post there. You know, Luis Quende from Aragon has a great post around the emergent Ethereum stack with, you know, from a platform perspective, like Aragon for governance, District OX for marketplaces, whatever. Um, but one that people haven't been talking as much about is these crypto economic primitives. Um, and these are kind of like we have primitives in normal computer science where you're like, hey, you have lists and dictionaries and things. Um, and these these are kind of modular pieces that you can add to any given um, application. This is like that, but in this new crypto economic world where you have, you know, a list essentially that you can add to any application that you want. And so that's what we're going to chat about today, this token curated registry, which is a new crypto economic primitive or design pattern or a list. Um, so Mike, could you kind of first intro us to add chain um, and, and how that works and how the token curated registry and that list is needed within ad chain? Sure. So, um, yeah, so so the genesis of of all this was um, in December of 2016. Uh, I was I was just a lowly software developer at a consensus, and um, I, I was told uh, it was like a Friday, and I, I was told, Mike, you need to be in LA on Monday for maybe the next like uh, six months um, to to work on this project uh, with with a partner of ours. And I I had never been to LA, and I said, Oh, well, that actually sounds sounds great. Um, so it was uh, this ad tech company, um, Meta X, and uh, they they had been uh, thinking about how do you solve the twenty billion dollar a year problem of fraud mm -hmm. in in ad tech. So uh, the vast majority of this of this fraud uh, is it comes from bot farms. So the way this works is uh, I run a website. Coca Cola will pay me a penny to serve an ad. I can buy bot traffic to view that ad for mm -hmm. half a penny, um, and because it's 
basically impossible to detect. I'm just going to like do that all day long. So it's it's kind of a uh, an, an incentive. So you pay the there. bots essentially to view your website, quote unquote, view it, and then you get the money from Coca Cola for view for them viewing it. Yeah, it's, it's cheaper for you to acquire the bot traffic um, than, than the revenue you get from the ads. Yeah. Yep. So, so that that was the the problem that they wanted to solve. Obviously, at the outset, we had no idea. You know, like I mean, we didn't go into it thinking that we had a solution. We went into it hoping we could discover a solution. Yep. Um, and uh, we spent like the first four months building this really uh, involved um, system that wound up just being like really fundamentally broken. We spent like four months just doing the wrong thing, basically. Um, scrapped that in a rather <laughs> dramatic and emotional, um, uh, conference call with nice. the consensus lawyer. Um, and then went, went back to square one. Um, and, uh, so, uh, what, what, so I, I had an idea after we had scrapped our original idea. I wanted to do like the Supreme Court of the Internet where like if someone defrauds you on the Internet, you can like appeal to some like uh, ar arbitrator who would, um, you know, make a decision about, you know, who to release the money to. And, and then they could appeal to a higher court, blah, blah, blah. And my my uh, my colleague and former coworker, a guy named uh, Amin Soleimani, yep. um, who has since uh, left consensus to go do the Spank Chain project. Mm -hmm. um, Amin. Uh, had a had an early copy of a white paper from uh, the Aventus project. Uh, he was uh, friends with some people on that project, and he was reading their white paper, and um, he was very inspired by um, an idea in in their white paper. Um, which so so Aventus is all about, uh, or, or largely about um, uh, finding credible sources of tickets mm. for events. Um, and so Aventus, uh, wanted to solve this issue where someone, you know, posts, okay, if there's going to be a Beyonce concert, you know, they want to know is, is Beyonce actually going to be there or is mm. this fraudulent? Is this going to be like the, the fire festival or whatever? Yeah. So they had, um, in this early version of their white paper, uh, they had just like this one little, uh, paragraph describing this, uh, like subsystem, um, where they had this notion of basically the, the primitive notion of, of like challenges in, mm. uh, you know, what have now been kind of formalized as token curated registries. And Amin, and Amin was really inspired by this. We took this little idea um, and then like expanded it to be basically our entire uh, our entire white paper to be like all of ad chain and, and to kind of uh, build in a bunch of um, blanks. And and so what, what ad chain is? Um, so we published the ad chain white paper and then a few months after that we actually I, I, I myself made uh, some further refinements along with some consensus interns and then released the token curated registries paper which is what will be the, the kind of formal crypto system we'll be talking about today um, so what a token curated registry is uh, and the way ad chain works is so you're a website right and uh, we have this list of high quality websites you want to be on this list because if you're on this list um, pub, uh, advertisers will pay a premium to, to serve ads on your, on your site. Some advertisers might, uh, not serve ads at all to sites, which are not, um, on, on this list. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I should say, by the way, no one knows, I said this earlier, but no one knows how to detect ad fraud. We don't either. Mm -hmm. We have no idea how mm -hmm. to detect ad fraud. Um, human subjectivity is kind of the best thing we can throw at it right now. And, yep. uh, as, as the free market gets better at detecting what bot fraud is, um, that expertise can, can be captured in ad chain. So the way it works is you're, you're the New York times, you want to be on this list. You have to put down a deposit in ad token. Uh, so you put down a deposit in, in the registry's intrinsic token, yep. uh, and token holders look at you, you've, you've started an application and they say, Oh, it's the New York times. They're pretty good. You know, it, you know, any advertiser would be happy to serve ads to them. They're not fraudulent. An application period passes. And you get into the registry. You, you get a listing. Nice. Your deposit is gonna is gonna stay with your your listing. You don't cool. you don't get it back unless you choose to exit the registry. Got it. So New York Times is in. We'll forget about them for now. Uh, CrazyPartyGirls.ru comes along. They mm -hmm. put down a deposit in an ad token. Um, you know, I'm an ad token holder. I go to their site to check it out, uh, see if it seems credible, and they have all these pop ups and like sound plays yeah. and makes my computer. spam blah blah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I say this is not a super credible site. Advertisers probably don't want to target ads at this. So what I do, they they put their deposit down. I put down a matching deposit in ad token, and this this creates a challenge. Mm. 
and then it goes to a, a token weighted vote of ad token holders. So at that point, just the token holders vote. If you have more ad token, you have more say uh, because you have more more uh, at stake. Um, let's say that that the challenger wins. Let's say that I win. Uh, the applicant's deposit is going to be forfeited. Uh, I get a special carve out of that deposit because I had uh, capital risk. Yep. Um, you know, I, I might have lost the challenge and lost my capital. And then the rest is divvied up to uh, token voters who voted in the winning voting block according to their to their token weight. So uh, that that's basically like that is that is the game. Um, worth noting, if the New York Times later later on like becomes a really crappy site and you know you uh, kick them sells out or themselves to a bot farm, yeah, because their deposit is there, you can you can challenge them later. Mm. So just something worth worth mentioning. That's that's the game, and um, you know. We could go much more uh, in depth on this, <laughs> and we and we shall go in depth in some way. So yeah, so the game, as you said, is just essentially you're looking for a list. You can either solve this ad chain problem in two ways. One, you can find out how to determine whether it's a bot or a human, and that's what you guys maybe we were trying to do, and it didn't really work or what have you. And it's like okay, instead we're just going to allow the people themselves economically incentivize them to say, hey. Here's this list of good websites um, or good publishers, um, and and they can that list will be curated by um, the people themselves, and you can if you, you can get in, you're like great, this person New York Times gets in, and if you're a person who doesn't who's bad, then all the people who are part of that list are incentivized to kind of challenge that person, maybe yes. you know, keep them out. And 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 the reason token holders have that incentive, the reason token holders have the incentive to keep the list high quality is that say they do start. You know, letting in uh, crappy sites, yep. Ad advertisers are going to stop caring about this list. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, "Oh, like we're referencing this list, and we're still losing a bunch of money mm -hmm. all the time. Like we're not going to this. This doesn't matter to us. We're not going to yeah. pay mm -hmm. pay a premium for these for these sites." When that happens, publishers will stop applying to be in the list. Mm -hmm. Publishers drive fundamental demand for the token because mm -hmm. they have to like put down deposits in the token. Token holders, all they care about is the price of their tokens. We we do not assume that they are at all like generous or charitable or that they have any like stake yep. in in like the affairs of the mm. of the candidates and consumers of the registry. Mm. They just want to you know have demand for their token as high as possible. So they have a rational economic incentive to do a good job of curating this registry to keep their candidates wanting to apply. Yep, got it. And I think that is a thing that we could dive into a sec, which is like, oh, what happens if the t the token holders do are aligned with certain parts of that, and we'll go into that in a bit around these kind of uh, possible attacks against the system. So let's, let's talk about another um, use case here that you gave in one of your recent uh, more formal papers around the token curated registries or TCRs um, as a thing, and specifically around like this list of colleges. And we know like right now within society, we have lists of colleges made by, I don't even know who makes them, I forget, but they say, hey, here's the top list of colleges or whatever. Um, walk us through that example We're using a TCR for this list of colleges yeah. instead of um, these advertiser publishers. Yeah. So in, in the paper, I use this list of a, of, of a, you know, a list of top colleges, you know, like U.S. News and World Report publishes this list. Right. Um, and this is a this is a, a curated list. Uh, there's some committee or group of journalists at U.S. News and World Report who put it together every year. Um you know, I don't know how how uh, like big big a problem the quality of uh, of like their colleges list is, or if U.S. Uh, news is like subject to bribery. Mm -hmm. um, but you could you could decentralize this process. You could get rid of uh, you know the you, you could get rid of U.S. News and World Report as as the key entity um, in the process. So you know the incentive loop there is if you're if you're a college president, you obviously desire to have your college. Uh, you know, on that list because you'll get more uh, applications. You may even be able to like raise tuition. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you are, you know, a high school student uh, or the parent of a high school student, you know, someone who will be going to college uh, in the near future, uh, you want high quality information out of, out of a list that purports to be a list of, of top colleges. Um, so so I, I talk about that in the paper, but I, I actually recently I've been using a different example, one that has kind of a tighter feedback loop because mm. of the top college, you don't really know until 10 or 15 years later, yeah. you know, how you're doing yeah. in life. Um, so these days I actually talk about a list of like the best restaurants in, mm. in your city. So, you know, same incentive loop. If you're a restaurant, you want to be on this list, you get more customers. If you're somebody who goes to restaurants, you want to only go to good restaurants. If you're referencing this list and you go to a bad restaurant, um, 
you're you're not going to look at the list again. You know, it's it's let you down. It's not proven itself to be to be credible. You're certainly not going to tell your friends to bother looking at uh, the list. Um, and if consumers stop stop referencing the list, restaurants are going to stop bothering to apply. Like it would be uh, meaningless for them. So, you know, at this point, we've covered like you know three examples: non fraudulent websites, top colleges, and, yep. and restaurants. Yep. Uh, you know, perhaps the uh, the listener um, realizes that oh. Token curated registries are applicable to solving perhaps many different problems. Any list, you know, it's it's any yeah. list, and that's kind of the crazy. I like to think of that from this when I when I when I explain people when I tell people about the blockchain ecosystem, I break it into four primitives of like the blockchain itself, um, you know, smart contracts, tokens, and um, distributed autonomous organizations, and how from those four things you get a lot of emergent behavior. And I think we'll see a similar thing with token curated registries and maybe some of these other crypto economic primitives, where you say, hey. Here's this list, and wow, it's really cross applicable to a lot of things. Lists, in fact, are everywhere. Um, tell me a little bit yeah. more before we dive into some of those other examples. Um, tell me a little bit um, about so for this restaurant example. Tell me the when I, if I'm a like you know just purely talking about the economic incentives for people here. If I'm a restaurant, I pay in this let's call it restaurant to- restaurant coin or what have you sure, to be sure. on this top restaurant list, and then. Um, and that increases the demand for restaurant token. Um, if I'm a, if I'm just a user of the list, if I'm a food eater, do I have to participate within this, um, within the system with restaurant? No, coin? that's that, that's actually one of the beautiful and uh, I think really nice user friendly properties of token curated registries. If you are a a consumer of the list, you don't even need an Ethereum address. Like you never need to send a transaction. Mm-hmm. Like nothing. It's just a list. Um, like any anyone can build a UI that like you know uh, displays this list and yep. um, that's that's all it is you know this this would be like so so uh, one day yelp will will get wise and yelp will just be a token curated registry of of uh, uh, top restaurants yep 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 exactly so that makes sense and so you have the person the restaurant needs to participate with their restaurant coin and then the restaurant the people who are the perv- then there might and this gets into some of these like if I'm a really intense food person, maybe I would also be a, an intense token holder so that I can keep yeah. people in or out of this awesome list that I have curated as if I'm like a yeah, Zagat, yeah. you know, like five star yeah. Iron Chef person. So so if you're if you're like the New York Times restaurant critic and you have a lot of, uh, you know, clout, um, you could you could make some money for yourself, you know, playing the incentive game as as a token holder because, you know, you go to a lot of restaurants, you know, what's what's good and what's not. Um, and so when a restaurant applies, which, which you don't like, which you had a bad experience at because you just have social clout, you know, you can go wherever the token holders, uh, talk, maybe they have a Slack or a Reddit, whatever. And, and you say, Hey, I'm going to vote against this restaurant. And here's why I'm not only, not only am I going to vote against it, I'm going to open the challenge challenge against it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to challenge it. And I stand to make a good amount of, of money there. Here's why you should vote against it. Um, so there, there is a you know potential for um, you know sophisticated activist token holders to uh, realize like revenue for themselves from issuing challenges without ever parting with their uh, their their principal their their original um, re- registry token. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so and this kind of gets into this piece here around. Correct me if I'm wrong, but right now there are no live token curated registries. Is that correct? Not, not yet. We no. are, we are, a- we are aiming to be the first uh, nice. with, with ad chain. We are, we're on schedule for April 2018 full mainnet production. Exciting, plan. cool. That that'll be great. Um, and until then, let's let's check in on these kind of. What do you see as some of these potential attacks that you might be, you know, warning yourself against? And you know, the paper goes more into this, but specifically this one on coin flipping and vote memeing. Could you talk a little bit more about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So. Um, Two, two, so these are two kind of different attacks, but they're both, uh, they both come from the same place. They both uh, are, are rooted in the same, um, the, same, the same kind of open question. Well, so anyway, what, what they are, so what coin flipping is. Uh, so in token curated registries, when you vote, um, if, you, if you vote on the winning side, you get paid. If you vote on the losing side, nothing happens. You don't lose tokens. You just don't get paid. Your only cost is like the capital cost of having your tokens locked up for, for that period. So what people might do is they might say, oh, it's not worth it for me to actually do any diligence. Like I can just like, you know, flip coins, take mm-hmm. a guess and I'll win half the time. Or, or just like for every single vote, I just split my coins. I put half my coins in yes and half mm-hmm. in no. And it's just like a, a revenue stream, yep. right? So, so that's, that's coin flipping. 
So coin flipping is not um, coin flipping is not so bad. The reason being, uh, if a vote is you know tied zero zero, that's the same as if it's tied a million a million. If there's yeah. one one rational activist um, you know token holder, they can they can tip the scale. Now, of course, that that rational activist token holder, um, their payout is reduced because their token weight is less relative to to the freeloaders, mm. these people who are coin flipping. But you could certainly argue that um, the uh, the activist token holders should like you know take out a loan and like they should like borrow uh, you know money to like acquire ad token you know, kick out the, the losers. Um, yeah. and, uh, you know, then, then they can just be the, the king of the hill. So, so I don't think, I don't think coin flipping is, is that big a deal. Vote memeing is, a th- though it speaks to a very important point, which we'll come to in a minute. Vote memeing would be a bigger deal if it occurred. Vote memeing is a behavior where, um, it becomes a meme, uh, to always vote yes, or to always mm-hmm. vote no you know, one, one way or the other, just cause then you always win, right? If people are like, Oh yes, always wins. I'm always going to vote. Yes. Mm. Uh, I, I always get money. That's a more serious attack because that, that like does damage the quality of the registry. Like a, mm. a, a minority of, of rational token holders cannot, you know, tip, tip the scale. The reason that I, uh, group these two attacks together is that they both speak to an open question that we have in token curated registries, um, w- which is, when people are playing this incentive game, will they behave tactically or will they behave strategically? So mm. in, in the course of a, of a challenge, uh, token holders are playing two games. They're playing a tactical game and they're, and they're playing a strategic game. Their tactical game is to increase the sum of their holdings, increase the number of tokens that they have. That's the mm-hmm. tactical game. Yep. The, the strategic game is to increase the value of their holdings, mm. right? So, so the tactical game is to do coin flipping, vote memeing, or just to like reject everyone who, who applies. That makes sense tactically. Uh, doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense to um, like to long. And when, when you when you think about yeah. tactical and strategic, you're talking about like short term and long term kind of. Is short term right? and long. Yeah. yeah. And we we just we just don't know how people are going to behave, and I don't think uh, we will know until we until we go to production. Me as an ad token holder, I'm going to be behaving uh, very strategically. Oh yes, you, but <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll see. Um, and and I talk with with um, my colleagues about this uh, quite a lot. And um, you know, uh, uh, behavioral economics is it is it is it more art than science? Like, can we really model this? If if we can model this, we don't have the expertise to do it. So we're just going to go to production and do see what happens. And see. Yep, I agree. Yeah. I think that you might see different um, different kinds of actors within different systems may act differently. So for the colleges example, is different than the restaurant example, is different than the you know ad chain example. So you might see different people being very strategic and just increasing the amount of tokens versus being more or that being tactical versus being strategic, which is increasing the actual value per token. Um, yes. Got it. Yeah, so that's interesting. So tell us a little bit about, you know, this kind of leads into some of these other open questions around token curated registries. Um, you know, some of the ones here, we got this minimum economy size. We've talked a little bit about parameterization. What's on your mind yeah. here? Uh, so the minimum economy size thing is, um, so the, so in, in theory, a token curated registry can be used to curate any list, mm-hmm. anything from you know, like a list of high quality domains like we do for ad chain down to like a grocery list, right? In theory, it almost certainly will never make uh, economic sense to like decentrally curate a grocery list. Mm -hmm. Like it just wouldn't make sense for like Nabisco to research, you know, what is in your pantry and then like apply, you know, just wouldn't, (laughs) wouldn't make sense. So, um, you know, those examples are kind of black and white, but we don't know like where exactly the gray area would be, like how much, um, volume does there need to be in applications to sufficiently incentivize a, a decentralized group of token holders to, um, you know, ex- do due diligence on applications. Yep. So that, that's an open question. You know, I mean, is it, is it, you know, a hundred thousand dollars of volume a year or is it a hundred million dollars of volume a year? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
not really sure. So that's an open question. And um, that, that one kind of reminds me of some of the stuff that Simon de la Rivier was talking about around like mitosis within these systems where you have a – if you have a big token period registry that's doing $100 million of volume a year, that might break into some sub you know, token period registries. Do you see this – tell me how you think about those – the kind of mitosis and the kind of sub registry. So like with the restaurant example – you know, is there is there going to be one specifically for Brooklyn and then another specific one for, you know, is there going to be one generally for all of New York? How do you see that kind of playing? Yeah, out? yeah. Yeah. So in the restaurant example, so say we have our, our, our registry of, of good restaurants in New York City, right? So we have that. Um, then someone wants to, to filter on the basis of good sushi restaurants mm-hmm. in New York City. So you would have a separate registry, which is a registry of all of all sushi restaurants, whether they're good or bad. And then to search for the good sushi restaurants, you just look at the, uh, you look at the, uh, the, the overlap in the, in those two sets, you take the good restaurants, sushi restaurants, and you, you get the overlap of those two things. Um, that is something that I fully expect to happen, um, for, you know, again, economies that are large enough to, to support it. Um, you know, like I, I don't, I, I don't even know if, if the, um, you know, application volume, it, it might be, but I don't know if the application volume for like top restaurants in New York city would be sufficient to sustain a TCR. Um, you know, I don't know if the application volume for sushi, re- sushi restaurants would be sufficient to, to sustain a TCR, but for economies that would support it, totally expect that to happen. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So when you talk about the restaurants in New York and then the sushi restaurants, for the sushi restaurant, is that its own TCR as well, where you're not you, – Yeah. You, great, cool. Yep. And then you take the set, the and of those two things, and then you get, yeah. great, these are good. So all the sushi restaurants over here, even some really bad ones, all the restaurants over here, even some non-sushi ones, you take them together and you get just good sushi restaurants. Okay. Does that yeah. make sense? This episode is brought to you by Shapeshift.io, the world's leading trustless digital asset exchange. Quickly swap between dozens of cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Ether, Dash, Bitcoin Cash, Augur, Golem, and many more. And this is not your typical crypto exchange. You don't need to create an account or share your personal information, and your funds are never stored on Shapeshift. This means that your hard-earned digital wealth is never up for grabs by hackers or other malicious actors. To get started, visit Shapeshift.io, choose the tokens you'd like to swap, input your receiving address, and send your funds. It's that easy. Um, so talking about some of these more kind of um, open questions that you have here, we talked a little bit about the minimum economy size and how that could work and also if that could break into sub-minimum economies. Um, what are some yeah, other yeah. open questions that you have? So um, parameterization uh, of <laughs> token curated registries is, uh, is, is open. So what, what parameterization is, so a token curated registry has um, – at least in my my formalization of token curated registries, there are six parameters. Let's see if I can remember them all. These are the minimum deposit. This is, this is a quiz. Is, yeah, this is a quiz for myself. <laughs> exactly. It, there, there's the minimum deposit, which is uh, the, the deposit you need to put down to apply. Yep. Um, there's the application period, which is the duration that has to pass Great. before you actually get listed. Um, commit and reveal periods, which are just, you know, if there is a challenge, the commit and reveal periods for that vote. Got it. Uh, there's the dispensation percentage which is that special um carve out that you know the winning party in the challenge gets got it and what is the final parameter oh yeah the final parameter is the uh is the vote quorum which i want to rename because people always get confused about what it means what what the vote quorum is is um what is the necessary um majority of voters who do participate what is the majority that's necessary for for a vote to be considered mm. passing so generally this will be 50 percent but you could have a tcr where a super majority is required Great. got it cool. so 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 those those are the six parameters now um one thing that i give a huge amount of credit to amin for when we were um designing this this was this was amin who really pushed for this he did not want the system to have any magic numbers. He mm. did not want us to, at the outset, say the special dispensation will always be 50 percent or the application period will always be seven days. Um, because like we, we don't know. And, and if you look at something like the minimum deposit as the price of the token you know, fluctuates on the market, that will need the minimum deposit will need to, to change. If the price of the token goes down, you, know, you can basically do a spam attack against token holders. So mm-hmm. token holders need to be able to make these things adjust to, to market dynamics. 
So, so parameterization is all about how, um, how, how do you adjust those parameters in flight while the registry is deployed? So, uh, I'll tell you how we're doing it for ad chain. Cool. Um, but with, with the caveat that like, it is not as, as formally, you know, uh, beautiful as I think token curated registries are. And I'll tell you about like the known attacks against what we're doing for ad chain. And parameterization is, is governance, yeah, right? Exactly. Parameterization is governance. And I think that nobody has solved this yet. Yep, so yep, exactly. Yep. But, but this, this is how we're doing it, practically speaking, for, for ad chain. So we have a system that that uh, our parameterizer, it, it looks a lot like the token curated registry. It looks it looks pretty similar. So we have our parameters at, at time zero. We instantiate them with some default values. Say you want to change the minimum deposit, right? You put down, you, you make a proposal, yep. you put down a deposit. Um, in in add token to make this uh, proposal, the parameterizer itself has a different set of six parameters mm. relative to yep. the, the the registry that it governs, such yep. that like the deposit that I put down to propose the reparameterization might be much higher yep. than the deposit to apply to the registry. Yep, exactly. Um, but who determines the parameterization of the parameterizer? <laughs> It, it doesn't. It doesn't recurse infinitely. <laughs> okay, the, sweet. The, okay, yeah, cool. it's one. The, the parameterizer can parameterize itself. Okay, and that's the only level. Okay, good. Sweet. Yeah. Great. So as a token holder, I can propose to reparameterize the registry's parameters or the parameterizer's yep, parameters. Great, yep, but cool. it's one one parameterizer. Yep, yep. Um, okay. So I make this proposal to to change the parameter, and again, there's an application period. If no one challenges me, that that will get changed, um, and I get my deposit back. My deposit doesn't stay locked up. Um, and then otherwise someone can challenge me and there's a token weighted vote works, works just like, uh, in, in the ad chain Great. registry. Yep. In fact, the major difference is just that the deposits don't get locked up. Like you don't challenge existing parameters. You just propose a new, a new parameterization. Got it. Now this, this, like, I, I, I strongly suspect that this will work practically speaking. The known problem with it, um, is that it requires token holders to be, uh, diligent. So if I'm if I'm an attacker um, and I propose to change the application period uh, to a million years, mm. and I, and I succeed in doing that, yeah. if I succeed once, we're done. It's broken. <laughs> like you know, nothing. Like it's it's the system is essentially frozen. Yep. You know, no one else will ever be able to make um, a change. So it relies on on token holders when they see something you know, that would obviously break the system, challenging it and, and rejecting it. As long as they're diligent, it's fine. But what's kind of, you know, not nice about it, the reason I don't consider it super well solved is that if the attacker does succeed once, the system's broken forever. Yep. In, in in the registry, if one bad apple gets in somehow... Or, you just or, kick you, that person out. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's fine. Yep. With the parameterizer, you could break it forever. Yeah, so. interesting, interesting. Yeah, so... Yes, is to say that an open question here is how should governance of TCRs happen? And the initial try that you guys are doing with AdChain is to create a parameterizer itself, which is has a bunch of parameters in it, and you essentially do the same kind of TCR system, but instead of on the list of let's say you know the publishers, and you instead do it on the list of parameters. Um, on yeah. the six parameters, you still have the same we, we challenge use, system. Uh, yep. We use the next, so it's between the two. We use the same challenge mechanics. Got it. Cool. Um, so let's kind of transition into a little bit of this kind of pushing the field. Like, you know, I think we've we've gotten to a point where we've kind of dove into at least some of the initial things around TCRs and how they might be, how they how they're used with with lists and any kind of list, especially this ad chain list, um, and then diving into some of the specific parameters and how it works. One thing that I'd love to talk about is. Um, the overlap with some of these other kind of crypto economic primitives. Um, and so a big one that um, we've talked about a bit is, you know, Simon de la Rouvier's curation markets. And he just released this cool article about comparing and contrasting kind of TCRs with um, uh, curation markets. So how do you, Mike, see the difference between these two kind of emerging primitives? Yeah. So, um, so, so first I would say um, what they both do kind of at a high level um, is they help to signal things. They are signaling systems. Um, in a token curated registry, we give a, a binary in or out signal. Um, in a curation market, you have various topics uh, which can be which can have um, signals uh, signal strength, which is like relative relative to other uh, topics. There's like a you know gradients there. 
so I would say they're, they're similar in that they're both uh, signaling systems. Beyond that, they're, they're quite different. The, the mechanics of them, like they're kind of like apples, apples and oranges. Um, so with, with curation markets, you know, what, what a curation market, you know, might be useful for one thing it's, you know, theorized to be useful for, um, would be like, you know, decentralized Reddit, right? So I, I start, uh, a, a decentralized subreddit called like, um, you know, pig memes, nice. it's like memes about pigs and. I think that pig memes are going to be huge and cause I make some really funny pig okay, memes. I trust you. And so, <laughs> so, so I, I buy a bunch of um, tokens for, for the, for, for pig memes and I buy them cheaply. The way curation markets work is at time zero tokens are cheap. As more people purchase the tokens, the tokens become more expensive. Uh, the tokens, the, the, so I, you purchase an ether or some other currency the currency that you're purchasing in, it's going to like sit in the smart contract that you purchased from. Um, so, so I'm working really hard. I'm making all these memes. You know, I'm using my my token to signal like, hey, pay attention to these memes. And then some other people are like, oh, pig memes are pretty cool. I want to get in on this. So I they buy. It, yeah. Yeah. So, so you buy. Some. I buy my memes for like ten now. You bought them for one, but yep. Yeah. So because I'm OG, it's like relatively cheap for me to put my memes out there. Um. And then, but but your memes are pretty good, and so even more people start start coming aboard and buying more and more tokens. Me, I've been in this for a while now. I'm like the pig meme OG. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of ready for the next thing. I'm ready for like pigeon memes. I think nice. pigeon memes are going to be yes. super hot. So, um, because of the way the curation market works, I might own at this point 10% of the token supply, having only put in 1% of the capital. Uh, I can you know retire. I can exit my position. Uh, I can take out 10% of the capital that's sitting in in the token bank because I have 10% of the token. So I have like I have I have profited by um, like creating uh, creating content that that people are interested in and, and effectively signaling uh, to other people what content they should pay attention to. Mm-hmm. So that's that that's curation markets, um, which you know just at, at face value, even though they're both signaling systems, you can see are, are quite different from from token curated registries. Yeah, and I think as you say, it's, and I think that the key thing that you said there, which is similar to what Simon said as well, which is like, hey, you know, a TCR is a zero or one. You're either in or you're out of one of these lists. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about the, the kind of other ways to signal that, but then the curation market is a way to kind of stake and get your, it's, it's much more of a percentage and you can kind of be, it's not just a specific list, kind of you can imagine the list of people who own those kind of pig memes or whatever, the pig meme tokens, but really it's a, it has kind of built into it a natural curve of like supply and demand um it kind of has built into it this this desire to build up something and then get out um and so yeah i think that they are like you say they're both similar in that they are ways to signal um information or, or signal around information and then they're different in that yours is zero or one and the curation market is more of a gradient are there other ways that you see them as being different um other ways that I see them as being oh well, so one one significant way, and this is uh, you know there there are probably certain people listening to this podcast who will care about this a lot. Um, <laughs> with, a, uh, with a token curated registry, it, it needs a token which is of of finite supply, mm-hmm. um, which means that you know there is the opportunity to uh, do do a token launch mm-hmm. for for that token just because the token has to be a finite supply. With with curation markets, the token is of, um, you know, uh, it, it is it's not a continuously a fixed minted. Yep. Yeah, it's a continuously issued token. Um, you can't uh, you can't necessarily do do a token launch for for a curation market. Um, that's that's another difference. Not that like, you know, not not that like it's necessarily the best thing to do a token launch for that. Yeah, they're just different different ways to kind of push the tokens out into the world. Okay, so let's you know think one thing that you said um, last time around, you know the way we were talking about signaling and like zero to one signaling. One thing that's interesting within this kind of these new crypto economic primitives is not only can you use a TC a crypto economic primitive, aka a TCR, within your random DAP that you're developing, you can also kind of combine the crypto economic primitive with another crypto economic primitive to kind of get some yeah, new yeah. interesting behavior. So could you talk about specifically a taking the prediction market crypto economic primitive and putting it onto a TCR um, primitive? Yeah. So one thing that people ask 
all the time. Like usually once someone has read the token curated registries paper and, and like they, they get it, they've answered kind of all their basic questions about it. Um, they're like, how can we, how can we order the, the list? So we have this list of good restaurants. Can we, can we now like rank them, you know, like the best to like just barely good enough. Yep. Um, and actually let me, a quick note on that is that, yeah, when I said earlier, I kind of misspoke and talked about the TCR as a list. What I really meant was the TCR as a set, um, from like the computer science perspective. So yeah, so you're right. It is where you start with a set and then the goal is to go to a list maybe. Yeah. Well, so I, I say list all the time also, <laughs> but you're, you're absolutely right that if we were being very proper, we would say it's a, it's a set. Mm -hmm. Um, cause yeah, there, there is no ordering. So, so the answer is you, you can't, at least we haven't figured out how, and, um, you know, I've talked about this pretty extensively um, with with a number of people, and and there's nothing intuitive, uh, nothing mm -hmm. obvious, and we've we've exhausted the obvious paths toward towards trying to see how could we create ordered lists in in a TCR. Um, and I it, I feel totally fine that that we can like it's a simple system does one thing well. You know, if we want to create ordered lists, um, let let's build a separate crypto system. So yeah. here's how I would. Here, here's how I suggest we uh, can at least move towards um, a notion of like ordering within a TCR. So in ad chain, for example, we have this binary signal. A publisher is either good or it's bad. What if you want to know, you know, is this publisher better than the other? What you could do uh, is you could have a prediction market, you know, Gnosis or Augur, you know, whichever, it doesn't matter. You'd have a prediction market or a set of prediction markets that point to all of the listings in the registry and they all ask the same question. Will this listing still be in the registry six months from now? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if a lot of people are saying no, you know, or, or if they're saying yes, you know, I, either way, the, um, you know, weighting of that prediction market, that's like your second layer re reputation signal. Yep. And these would be able to, to interoperate uh, seamlessly. And yep. then, you know, the, the oracle that resolves the prediction market is totally decentralized because, you know, the contents of the, of the TCR are all, are all uh, on on chain. Yep, that makes sense. So yeah, if you want to, and I think of this, instead of like a prioritization of the list, this is essentially taking the TCR and kind of taking, making it through time. So you say, okay, we're gonna take the TCR at time equals zero, here's what it looks like. There's a prediction market for it at time equals three months, and here's what that prediction market looks like. There's a prediction market for it at time equals six months, and that's what that looks like. You can kind of imagine that through time. Um, does that make sense? Another one that I like to think about for things on top of things and like crypto economic primitives or design patterns intersecting, how do you think about um, like TCRs of TCRs? Yeah. So I was just talking with someone about this uh, this morning. Yay. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. So um, a coworker of mine, she was asking me whether I'd, I'd thought about creating um, like a standard interface to TCRs. So I think that the majority of TCRs are going to have identical APIs. One of my um, premises in the paper is that, like I say, wholesale reuse of a canonical implementation should be possible. Um, so, so that's that's cool. That's very helpful if you're going to create a unified uh, interface. And then um, my response to her was, I don't think you need a TCR of TCRs for its own sake. You could have like a factory contract that creates TCRs, and the UI could listen for events on that. Uh, but if you if you wanted to have this like meta TCR of all the highest quality yep. TCRs of all the most interesting TCRs yeah. that that could work you know yep. and that's that's just like it's so meta it's, it's funny you know mm -hmm. like a TCR of high quality TCRs um, there might be a future in which that is that is useful. Uh, I kind of think it will be. I mean, you have like U.S. News and World Report, you have whatever Pearsons or a bunch of different people, and you have a, a bunch of different things that are all saying, no, this is the one true set of whatever. Yep. And then someone else is like, well, actually, here's – this is – I of those 10, the, here are the top three, you know, or whatever. Um, so how do you – does that make sense uh, that you could have it? And, and one note on your – the UI layer versus the information layer. I think this is a key part um, when I think about like the attention economy and this like new internet world that we're, we're transitioning into. You have this information layer, and that's what the TCR is doing. Is it's purely the information layer, and then anybody who wants to can throw any kind of UI on top of it, and it can display the information whichever way you want to. Um, yeah. So one thing, one final thing before, as we get into kind of wrap up mode here is, you know, one thing that you want to talk about was these token curated awards, um, which you've also been talking yeah, yeah. about and collaborating with. So could you kind of dive into these token curated awards and how those might work? 
Yeah, so th- this is my my coworker uh, Niran Babalola's idea, which um, I I, I, I just think it's yeah, N- Niran's great. <laughs> I I actually I have to uh, I I should like give Niran a shout out. Like Niran, way back in the day, back when I was like an intern at Consensus, and you know was just like young and dumb. You know, Niran Niran <laughs> might still be me. young and dumb, Mike. You never yeah, know. <laughs> yeah. Um, N- Niran was one of the first people to like really um, impart very head spinning ideas to me about you know what was really maybe possible with blockchains. Niran is, I think, one of the most incredible uh, thinkers in, you know, in, in the space. Anyway, his idea for token curated awards. Um, so his like uh, premise for this um, is basically that uh, token holders should not, token holders do not, do not need to like accrue um, all of the upside for themselves in, in a token curated registry. There should be a way to actually, um, amortize some of that upside in a way which is uh, productive. So his idea for token curated awards is that you could have a um, you, you could have some some group of people who they want to see uh, progress in like schizophrenia research. You know, they, they want to see like, um, you know, either medical advances or just like, you know, better understanding of of like what what uh, sch- schizophrenia is. Um, and so the way it would work is if you are a scientist or a doctor who's working on this thing and, and you believe you've made some breakthrough, you can apply for an award. You put down a, a deposit just like you do in a TCR. Um, now, the you, you wouldn't necessarily do this otherwise. Like you don't have upside exactly from like applying to this TCR. Like you're so so why why do you do it the token holders are going to they're going to look at your uh work and they're going to say oh this is this is great we like understand this disease better now we want to reward you for this and they they do this um by inflating the supply of the token that they hold so they inflate the supply and they give those tokens to the award winner now this obviously is a uh, you know it's not like good strictly speaking in like the economic sense for the token holders because they're you know their tokens getting inflated um but they have they are deriving value which is uh extrinsic to like the the um the economics of, of the token itself like these people you know have some stake in seeing uh you know sch- schizophrenia research advance so they like derive utility um in, in that way. Yep. So, so token curated awards are, are just, a, I think a pretty, um, interesting, uh, riff, um, on the token curated registries idea. And, and I actually, uh, am very much looking forward to, to seeing Niran develop it. I, I would love to actually even, you know, maybe collaborate with him on, on developing the idea. Cause I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. I think it has, um, and it, and it takes the idea. It's not so much, it's not being on the list that's key there. It is the concept of being able to apply for the award um, that is kind of the main like sub-design pattern that's taken away from that. And it reminds me of some of these like impact certificates or social impact bonds. Have you heard of those? Where you, after you've done something good, you essentially tell the people, hey, I've done this good thing, and you get reward for it. Or it also kind of reminds me of uh, Tezos and their self-amending ledger and how they self-amend it through inflating the currency. Um, yeah, kind of taking a kind of different subsystems within there and applying it to TCRs. Um, okay, so into wrap-up mode here. Um, I mean, overall, we talked about, yeah, a TCR is essentially a set or a list that you can use at any kind of developer within the, especially Ethereum, but any kind of smart contract ecosystem can use um, to create uh, this kind of decentralized list. Um, Mike, do you have any final thoughts on, like, you know, either, you know, if someone's listening to the show right now, you know, how should they start to, you know, integrate TCRs in with their work or any kind of final thoughts from you around TCRs? Um, so uh, in, in regards to integrating TCRs with with your work, um, you need lists all the time. Like so much of what humans do just like in society is making lists. Yep. Um, like it's, it's a very basic thing that we just seem to have like a primal <laughs> need to, to do. Gotta have a to-do um, list, yeah. And uh, like like there there are a lot of um, white papers that, that I read. I read a lot of white papers like for consensus, you know, stuff like comes our way and I, I you know, do some, some work uh, vetting things. Yep. Um, 
And I, I, you know, a comment that I find myself writing all the time is like, you know, they'll have like some like centralized part of the system, which is always unfortunate. And I'm like, you can decentralize this using a, a TCR. You know, that's like feedback I give mm. all, all the time. So, um, yeah, I mean, an, anytime you need to make a list, you know, think about a, a TCR. That That's one thing I would say. Um, two, I would say if you're like, if, if you're really interested in, in TCRs and you want to talk about them, email me directly, yeah. mike.golden at consensus.net. Um, read, read the paper first. Don't like, waste <laughs> my time. But, uh, you know, I, I'd love to talk. And, and finally, um, last thing I should say, which is very important, uh, you know, I think you introduced me as a, as a co-inventor of token curated registries. Um, to definitely give props to uh, Amin Soleimani and, and James Young, who yep. worked on me with AdChain. They were uh, huge um, and also my, one of my interns over the summer, a kid named York Rhodes, he actually had, um, he had like the breakthrough idea that, um, listings should not be periodically reapplied. They should be indefinite, but challengeable at any time. Mm. He was just like an intern who had this idea, which is like that, that was when like token curated registries really became like, I was like, Oh, this is a really elegant, like formal pattern. And then finally, of course, the, um, the, uh, the uh, Aventus people, um, you know, we were uh, kind of standing on the shoulders of giants, you know, working on the um, good, good original work that, that that they had done. So, yeah, I just want to uh, give credit where credit is due totally. to everyone who, who took us this far. And I, and I agree. And that's something that I talk about a good amount in this space. And that I talked about with Joe from District OS on my last podcast was like, hey, you know, every different people are using give ETH's mini me token you have you know as you know curate like within joe stuff like they're using curation markets they're using token curator registries that it's just like this great and other people are standing on their shoulders so it's kind of this nice rising tide lifts all boats mike has um you know given props to people in his past when you do stuff that's cooler than what mike is doing now or is you know is building off of token curated registries you can give him props in the future um yeah any final thoughts um mike today as you, as we kind of wrap up here no, I mean, I'm, I'm psyched. The token curated registries will not be the last crypto system, you know, like there is more to come. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm not even saying necessarily for me, like, you know, if you're out there and you have an idea, you know, write it down and start, start getting feedback and, and don't be afraid of receiving uh, critical feedback. You know, that's, that's a part of the process and, and that's, that's what it takes. So, um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna build a better world by, you know, uh, putting better ideas out there. Yep. Building a better world through mechanism design. Hashtag blockchain. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you so much for being on the show, Mike. Um, and thanks to all of our listeners for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, definitely check out. Um, I'll have some links to both Mike's work and Curation Market's work and how it's being used in District OX and all those things. Um, you know, and the full range of, of links there. Also, if you want to check out, uh, please, you know, check out uh, AdChain as a thing that's coming out. And especially if you're an advertiser or publisher or what have you, um, and see a TCR live in April of 2018. Uh, and then finally, if you want to support myself on Patreon, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash R-H-Y-S-L-I-N-D-M-A-R-K. Thanks so much, everybody, and goodbye.